Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Jack the Mind Sculptor, and I am here with episode 3 of my complete guide to drafting. Now, in this episode, I am going to talk about curves. And I don't mean the curves on Avicen herself, but curves and needs as it applies to drafting. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about curves. And what curves is really short for is your mana curve. And mana curve is a concept that applies to all aspects of magic but it's also still really important when you're drafting and when you know considering uh, what cards you're gonna pick and the reason this is important is because ideally in a game of magic uh, because you need land to cast spells you want to be playing pretty much one land a turn and on each of those turns you want to utilize all of your land so you know first turn you play a land you cast a one drop you know second turn play your second land cast a two drop and the reason this is is because you want to use your mana efficiently. Um, you always want to have as much mana as possible because, as a general rule of thumb, anything that costs more mana usually is a better card. And so when drafting, um, and this is super easy in Magic Online because you can uh, sort by converted mana costs. In real life, it's a little bit harder. You have to keep in mind the converted mana costs of every card while you're drafting. And in general, in limited especially, you do want a low curve or a mid-range curve. And I'll show a couple of pictures here of my decks. Like uh, this curve is more of a mid-range curve. And this one is slightly lower, but still kind of mid-rangey. I mean, in, when drafting, you're never going to get a perfect curve. Because a lot of times, you know, card power is slightly more important than curve. And sometimes curve is slightly more important than power. Um, a good rule of thumb that I picked up from an article from a pro is if you're looking at two cards in a pack and you want them equally, just pick the one with lower mana costs. And yeah, so Curve is super important and it's actually one of the major reasons to break away from, well, the break system. Uh, because, you know, say you have a deck of nothing but Soul of the Harvest. I mean, he's a six mana bomb, he's great. But if your deck was nothing but Soul of the Harvest, you wouldn't be able to do anything for the first five turns at all. And in those first five turns, your opponent could easily bring you to like two or three life. And by the time he comes out onto the table, it's too late. So having an efficient play every turn is super important. And um, as a quick side note, um, when talking about curve, we always assume one mana a turn. And that's also why it's important to have seven, about 17 land in a 40 card deck. Uh, in the description of this video, I'll link to a post on MTG Salvation of a guy who made a spread chart of basically um, your percentage of getting X land by turn X, or sorry, X land by turn Y. And it's a pretty good chart, and it shows you why you should play around 17 land and why you shouldn't keep, you know, one land hands. You always want at least three to two land. <laughs> and let's see. But yeah, so that's pretty much what Mana Curve is. It's a pretty simple but very important concept. And so let's go ahead and move to part two of this video, which is needs. And so needs are basically just a general term for cards that you will need for a good deck. And a lot of it has to know what a good deck is. So one of the concepts I talked about was curve. And having a good curve is very important to a good deck because of efficient mana usage. Also important is having a good number of creatures in limited. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, you want about at least 13 creatures in limited. And the reason for that is mostly when you're playing draft, you are going to be attacking and defending. And that's just pretty much what Wizards wants us to do. They like it to make it a creature-based game. And so you need around 13 creatures and you have to keep that in mind. You know, if if you have if you open up like a decent removal spell, but you only have eight creatures and this is like pack three, you might still want to pick up a creature over it if you already have a lot of removal and at the same time if you already have 16 creatures say and you see a good creature but there's also a decent removal spell and you have no removal you should probably pick up the removal spell um, needs are basically it's just important to bounce everything and have a good deck overall um, other aspects of need that you might want to keep in mind are uh, mana fixing if you're playing three colors uh, absolute restored not so much it's pretty much impossible to play three colors, but like in the Innistrad block, if you were playing three colors, cards like Traveler's Amulet and uh, what was the other spell? Evolving Wilds in Dark Ascension, those cards actually become a lot more important 
And more important than even picking up maybe a bomb. If this is pack three and you're in three colors and you don't have any color fixing. Yeah, so needs is kind of a hard concept to explain because it's something you need to know about. But you get better at evaluating your own needs the more you draft and you know the more strategy you learn about. So if you keep watching my later videos, you'll uh, learn more about needs in general. And so yeah, that was just a quick, really quick intro to um, mana curve and needs when drafting. And yeah, look forward to my next video, which will be about a slightly more advanced concept uh, about the draft itself, which is called signaling. And I'll see you guys next time.